up, Roberta, pick up, pick up. Hey, Dr. Z. Go ahead. I have you on speaker. Good morning, Roberta. You won't believe the good news. We got Z-mail. A Z-mail? A Z-mail! What are you waiting for? Tell me! Oh, no, Roberta. This is far too important to tell on the phone. Plus, I have some guests that I have to agree. You need to get here immediately. How long will it take, Roberta? Never mind. Stop talking. Get here immediately. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of San Diego Zoo Kids Corner. I'm Dr. Zoolittle. You won't believe the stories and adventures that I have to share with you. I cannot wait for you to join me on my journey through the animal world. So buckle up, because we're about to bring the zoo to you. We got a Z-mail from Noah G in Coronado, California, right there. Now, Noah G was describing a story of a baby crow that they found in their backyard that was learning to fly. Oh, yes. That's called a fledgling, Dr. Z. Precisely. Now, this fledgling was learning to fly, and the parents of this bird were watching from above to make sure that no predators came near it and would bring it food on occasion. And then after three days of perseverance, of practice, and the parents watching out for it, this fledgling took off and flew over the fence. Isn't that a great story, Roberta? And you know, Roberta, that made me wonder about animal upbringings. What do you think it's like to grow up in an animal family? That's so exciting! Noah was staying curious and observant and ended up learning so much about the animal families that share his neighborhood. Come to think of it, I do see a lot of different types of animal upbringings in my own habitat. You know, Roberta, to kick off this week's show, our friend Michelle went to visit with a close-knit family with equally supportive parents, just like the crow. I've got a math problem for you. What do you get when you add one gray wolf mom with one gray wolf dad? Four, of course. Four new gray wolf puppies were just born here at the Oakland Zoo, and they're now out of the den, on the move, and getting into all sorts of trouble. So we have two adult wolves, Sequoia and Siskiyou. They are both six years old, and this year they had a pack of four pups. The pups now are about eight weeks old and really love hanging out with dad, especially, and getting used to their new surroundings. Mom is still keeping a close eye on what's going on around her. As these pups are growing up is to be the vigilant one. She's keeping an eye out for any concerns. Although here at the zoo, there's really not too much to worry about, but dad just really loves playing with the pups and just exploring everywhere together. Two males and two females. And at this age, the pups are growing more curious about their environment, but they're still not quite sure. So they take a lot of their cues from mom and dad, and if mom and dad are okay with it, the pups are okay with it. It's hard to tell sometimes, but I think the males are the more rambunctious one. They really like to wrestle with dad, but we've seen all of them wrestling and being goofy and silly together. They're playing around and wrestling, and this is when they're learning those skills of how to be a confident adult wolf and be able to hunt and stock prey themselves. Animals like wolves and other top predators are keystone species, so their engagement with the landscape and how they hunt helps keep the landscape healthy. Wolves coming back into California is going to help enrich this landscape here and make a more well-balanced ecosystem. So out in the wild, it's very similar to the pack mentality here. They're, they're defending their territory, hunting together, and relaxing together in the space that they've created for themselves. Wow, those wolf parents certainly had their hands full with four cubs. 
Mum was very protective and Dad was very playful. It reminded me of my childhood. What was your childhood like, Roberto? I actually only have one sibling, Dr. Z. My younger brother, Robert. Growing up, I spent a lot of time with my mom and Robert, my Aunt Regina, my Uncle Ricardo were always close by. Oh, and I can't forget my cousins, Rory, Remy, and Ruby. <laughs> Zebras like to live with a lot of extended family. Really, Roberta? Well, kids, what is your family like? Just shout it out. Oh, I'm hearing some answers. Some of you have got big families, some of you have got smaller families, just like in the animal world. Oh, and everyone's got a different way of raising their babies. You know, each family is unique and varied, whether you're an animal or a human. Dr. Z, I heard some of our friends say they live with extended family. There are lots of examples of animal species that work together with cousins and family friends to raise their young. This reminds me of a baby recently born at the San Diego Zoo. Have a look. If you guys love baby monkeys, you're really gonna love our brand new Angolan Colobus baby here at the San Diego Zoo. This baby was born two weeks ago and he's easy to see in our group because he is all white. Baby Colobus are born that way so that everybody else in the group can see that we have a brand new baby and they'll wanna go and pick him up and help babysit him. So speaking of babysitting, Colobus monkeys are a species in which it takes a village to raise a baby. And that means that every other animal in the group might take a turn to carry the infant and give mom a break. Everybody's eager to get a look at the new baby. That's a very common thing in monkey groups. We have also seen his seven month old brother crying because he wanted to be held by one of the females when the infant was being held instead, but that's also very natural. So this colobus baby is very lucky because he lives in a big group of colobus. So when his mom didn't want to care for him properly, there was another mom who picked him up and adopted her as, his, as her own. Every birth is a reason to celebrate. It's an achievement. It's a success for that species. It's the most important thing that can happen to a group of animals is to have successful reproduction. infant was adopted when his birth mom couldn't take care of him. That's one lucky little monkey to have so many adults caring for him. It truly does take a village to raise some babies. Hey, Dr. Z, speaking of villages, do you call a group of monkeys? Oh, uh, Roberta, I've got this. I call them hysterical. I call them hilarious. Okay, I know what you're talking about, Roberta. Perhaps you're thinking a mischief of monkeys, or a trick of monkeys, or, or maybe a bundle of monkeys. <laughs> oh, as much as I wish it was a trick of monkeys, Dr. Z, it's actually a troop of monkeys. I should have known that, Roberta. Okay, I've got one for you, Roberta. What do you call a group of rhinos? Ooh, I know, a, a storm of rhinos. Oh, no, 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 a muscle of rhinos. No, no, Roberta. Those both sound good, but it's actually a crash of rhinos. And you can see where they get that name, Roberta. Whoa! I didn't see that one coming. Okay, one more for you, Dr. Z, and I really hope you get this one. What do you call a group of zebra? Ah, uh, Roberta, of course I know this one. It's your family. We call them a dazzle of zebra. You're quite right, Dr. Z, and most appropriately named, I might add. My family and I certainly are a dazzling dazzle of zebra. Wouldn't you agree? Of course, Roberta. And inspired by your dazzling dazzle of a family, our friend Olivia put a craft together all about your family. Let's check in with Olivia. Today, we're gonna make animal fingerprint artwork and each fingerprint represents a different member of the animal family. Now, I've chosen to do zebras, but you can do whatever animal you like. So first step is to choose your three colors. Now, I've got red, blue, and yellow. Obviously, your biggest fingerprint is going to be your thumb, so these are going to be the adults in my herd, and they will be red. Now, I'll go for yellow. And then for the babies in the herd, we'll go blue. Now, wait for that to dry, and then we can draw. 
All right, now everything's dry, we can start to create our animals. Now, each fingerprint represents the face of each zebra. We'll start with our adult zebra. All right, they are three adults. Now let's move on to the yellow ones. I think our zebra family is getting a little bit crowded and we haven't even finished yet. It's time to see our baby zebras come to life with the blue fingerprints. And there we have it, our fingerprint zebra family. But remember, you don't have to do zebras, you can do any animal. For my next one, I'm going to do birds. So same as before, our biggest fingerprint, which is our thumbs, will represent the adults in the family. Yellow for the teenagers, and blue for the smallest members of our family. Now wait for that to dry, and we can start drawing. All right, that's all dry now. Grab your pen and get creative. Our fingerprint bird family. Now you can get creative and use any animal you like. Wow! Olivia captured Roberta's family perfectly. It even inspired me to do my own drawing. I call it the many faces of Roberta. Let's look at it. I've got a red face for when Roberta has got a suntan. We've got a blue face for when Re Roberta recycles. We've got a green face for when Roberta composts. And we've got a yellow face for when Roberta just wants to be silly. What do you think about it, Roberta? Oh, it's beautiful, Dr. Z. Thank you. I've been looking for a new piece of artwork to hang in, in my basement. Roberta, don't be ridiculous. This doesn't belong in the basement. This needs to be the first painting that everyone sees the minute they enter your habitat. I'm so excited you're going to put it over there. You know what I observed, Roberta? Is that baby zebra look exactly like adult zebra. You see a baby zebra, you know what they're gonna grow up to look like. But there's some animals when you look at their babies, they look nothing like their adult self. Which brings us to our trivia of this week. And because we're dealing with animal upbringings, I brought a family member of my own. To do trivia with you this week, we have my mother. Lights, camera, action. Oh, well, hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Zoolittle's mother, Enelhirik Zoolittle. I'm so proud of my son. He's smart like his mother, he's handsome like his mother. And today I have been asked to do the trivia with you, all about babies. Let's get to today's trivia. The trivia, once again, all about babies. I'm going to describe a baby that looks nothing like his adult self. And you're going to see if you can guess who that baby is. Shout it out if you know the answer. Shout it out. Don't wait for a Nana Zoolittle. Okay, let's get started. Are you ready? My first baby starts life in a stream, would you believe? And then it grows a voice and it grows some legs and it cannot wait to jump out of the stream to carry on with its adventure. Do you know what baby I'm talking about? If you guessed the tadpole grew up to be an American bullfrog, you're absolutely correct. These amphibians never know their moms or their dads. They don't need to. As they grow up, they go through metamorphosis. They actually grow lungs and legs and hop into adulthood. Okay, are we ready for number two? Get ready. Remember, shout out the answer when you know it. Okay, my second baby started life the size of a jelly bean. Then it used to dig living alone in the burrows. But don't you worry, its mother would come and feed it dinner on occasion, just like I feed my babies. Did you guess echidna? Bravo! Yes, this little puggle grew up to be an echidna. They're one of the very few exceptional mammals, along with a platypus, who hatch from an egg. Okay, are you ready for my third animal? I'm so excited. So, 
This animal was the first of its two other siblings to hatch out of its egg in a nest that was enormous. It's even bigger than your bathtub if you can believe that. My goodness, and even though this chick was raised by both its mother and its father, it still had to be aggressive and assertive to get attention and to get food. Do you know who this chick is? If you guessed Bald Eagle, you got it. This feathery fluffball grew up to be a bald eagle. And although eaglets are known for sibling rivalry, this helps prepare the young bird for a tough life after they leave the nest. Well, it's time for some crazy strange facts about animals in our section we like to call All About You. In this section, we've got the weird, the wonderful, the gross, and the ew. Wildlife care specialists from all around the world have sent us their facts and here to present them to you is my favourite professor, Professor Hutchinson. Thank you so much, Dr. Zulittle, for that kind introduction. I've been asked here today to present an award. I'm not presenting an award. Oh, oh okay. I've been asked here today to receive an award. I'm, I'm not getting an award. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I've been asked here to, to give you some facts that are, are written down on my piece of paper and I'm going to give them to you right now in the segment that we call All About You. Let me see what that first thing is. Baby koalas will eat their mother's poo. This is what you want me to talk about? Okay, all right, so the baby koala will need something to help them digest the eucalyptus leaves because you see, koalas only eat eucalyptus leaves but they don't have the bacteria in the gut to help them digest this. So the baby koalas will have to eat their mother's poo in order to help them get that bacteria gut to help them to digest the eucalyptus leaves. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That is a triple ooh from Professor Hutchinson. Okay, the second fact is certain cichlids feed their babies mucus. Honestly, could you pick some better topics for me? All right, so there is a fish in the Amazon that is called the discus fish who would discharge some mucus. Both the moms and the dads do this and the baby fry will feed on this mucus. Ooh, that is a single ew on Professor Hutchinson's meter of ooh. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you next time on All About Ooh. Wasn't that fun? Wasn't that spectacular? Okay, it's enough about you right now. Not so fast, Dr. Z. We just received a Z-mail from Emily and Tommy S. with a delightful but gross ending. According to their email, birds built a nest in their patio heater. They could even hear the chicks making noise once the eggs hatched. But here's the best part. When it seemed the birds had left, they write, we opened the heater and saw an empty nest covered in bird poop. How lucky were they? Have you ever seen a bird's nest? Where did you see it? What did it look like? I mean, it was really risky of those birds to build a nest inside a heater, but it worked. It kept their eggs safe. And speaking of eggs and risky, we've got a new science egg experiment for you guys. I'm in the lab and I am ready to do my risky egg experiment. I have to say I'm a bit nervous because I've never done this experiment before and if it doesn't work, it's gonna be a huge mess. So I have got a jar of water. You can use a big cup as well. I've got a pie tin that I'm gonna put on top of my jar. I've got the inside of a toilet roll over there that goes directly above the pie tin and then the egg that goes on top of that. Now. I am gonna hit the python out of the way. If all goes right, the egg is gonna fall in to the cup of water. What is your hypothesis? A hypothesis is an educated guess. My educated guess is I am about to break some eggs. Are you ready? Drum roll please, drum roll, here we go, and... Okay, one more time. 
Here we go, and... Are you ready? <laughs> Drum roll, I'm a bit nervous, here we go. Drum roll please, here we go, and... All right, that one was a huge success. I've got two jars now, two eggs, two toilet paper inserts, and one pie tin that's big enough to hold both mason jars. Okay, I'm gonna hit hard. Drum roll, please, here we go, drum roll. Wow, look at that, even the toilet paper roll went inside the water. Amazing. Okay, the experiment isn't over yet. I now have four mason jars. I have got my tray. I have got four toilet roll holders, and I've got to make sure that they are perfect, because if they're not, we know what's going to happen. And I'm doing this without my glasses, so anything can happen. And everything is in place. All I have to do is swat the python away. So here we go, and... I guess we're going from science experiment to cooking and I'm making an omelette. Three and four. Okay, I have to just check that my eggs are on top of the water. Looking good, looking good. Okay, I'm nervous. Are you ready? I definitely need a drum roll for this one. Here we go, are you ready? Drum roll and here we go. So, what do you think happened? It's something called inertia. Inertia is what keeps a moving object moving and a stationary object stationary. So when I hit the tray out the way, the toilet paper rolls and the tray went flying off to the side, but the eggs stayed stationary and gravity pulled them down into the water. And that, my friends, is science. That was so much fun. And kids, I hope you get to try that experiment at home, but make sure you get your parents' permission first. And guess what? If you break the eggs, you get to serve them for dinner. Dr. Z, that was very well. Executed, I must say. <laughs> but where do you think the best place to get information about eggs is? The Encyclopedia. Oh, Roberta, I didn't see that coming. I guess it's that time again. It sure is. And there's plenty more jokes where that came from. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Ten tickles. <laughs> okay, how about this one from Charlotte in Virginia? What soccer position do pink birds play? Flumming. Golly! <laughs> oh, well played, Charlotte. Hey, one more. How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. <laughs> wow, Roberta, your jokes are getting better and better each time. In fact, I got a joke from Ezra, who's from Jacksonville, Florida. He is this many years old. One, two, three, four. And Ezra's joke is, why did the chicken cross the road? Answer, because he wanted to get some boogers. Ezra, that is amazing. I bet you wrote that joke all by yourself and I love it. It made my day, it made my week, it made my month. Keep those jokes coming, Ezra. Send your best jokes to zmail at sandiegozoo.org and we might include it in next week's episode. Well, you know, Roberta, I've got this idea. It's all about families, so why don't you get your family to each tell one joke, then pick the best joke and zmail that to us. Hey, wait a minute. If they're all good jokes, Z-mail them all. We'd love to see them. Magic time. 
Okay, I am going to introduce you to a magical family. I have got three identical ropes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Just like me and my triplets. Okay, I am going to put the ropes into my hand and I'm going to pull them out one at a time. So here I have, oh, a medium sized rope. Here I have a very long rope, like a daddy rope, and then a mommy rope, and a baby rope. Look at that. Three ropes, three different sizes. Let me show you how this trick is done. Okay, you're going to take the middle size rope and you put that on your shoulder. Then you make a loop with a small rope. And through that loop, you put the big rope. Okay, and then behind your hand, you hide the connection. You take the rope that's on your shoulder and you match it up to these three ropes. Now it looks like you've got three ropes of exactly the same size, but you don't. You've got the ropes that are linked together over there. So you say, here's my three ropes, one, two, three, one, two, three. You put them in your hand, you crumple them up, and you pull out a long one, a small one, and a medium-sized one. You need to practice, and you cannot reveal your secrets. Good job. Wow! Dr. Zoolittle, that was an amazing magic trick. It reminded me of one of my favorite animal families at the San Diego Zoo, our hippo family. The dad is the largest. The babies, of course, are the smallest. And the hippo mom is somewhere in between. Those babies seem to grow so quickly. Well, you know, Roberta, our guests can go check in on the hippos anytime they want. They just need to get the help of an adult and they can go to our live cams at sandiegozoo.org. Click on the hippo cam and you can watch the hippos 24 seven. I could watch the hippos all day. Be sure to take a look at the water in their habitat. Our hippo family likes to spend a lot of time in there. In fact, some of our hippo babies were actually born in the water. Wow, you know, Roberta, I had so much fun discovering animal upbringings this week. We, we saw the, the wolf and their four cubs and how protective and playful they were with those cubs. And I found it interesting that the echidna was raised by a single mom. And then, Roberta, we met the monkeys who were raised by their uncles and their aunts and all their relatives. What surprised you most about this week's episode? If you've got any questions, jokes, stories, or fun facts that you want to share with us, we hope you'll email us at Z, which stands for Zebra and Zoolittle, mail at sandiegozoo.org. Make sure you have a grown-up help you. Send a picture if you want. And if we use your suggestion, your joke, your story, your poem, your question on the air, we'll make sure to mention your name. We'll even put your picture up there. So thank you so much for joining us. What's this? Well, th there's one more email here from Eva. She's watched our episode on animal builders and she's written us a poem. Take it away, Eva. Hi, my name is Eva and I'm six years old and I have a poem to share. I watched the video Animal Builders and I decided to make a poem. Animals Work Together by Eva. Animals work together like me and you. Beavers, ants, and birds too. They help carry things and build nice nests. When they work together, it's the best. There's one thing I know that's really true. Animals help like me and you. There's the beaver that's got the piece of wood and is putting it with the rest of them. There's the bird in the nest. Bye. That was amazing, Eva. I especially like the drawings of the bird's nest and the beaver. I am so excited you all joined us for today's episode and I'm looking forward to your next visit where we can do some more exploring and wondering about nature. Keep asking those questions. See you soon. Stay curious, my friends.